Do you ever wonder how or why big ships like this or even big boats in general are able to float on water? I probably expect that they should sink because they are really heavy but it's floating just fine. Well there are some interesting concepts at play that makes this possible and I'll explain that in this video. In this video I'm going to show you some experiments to help you understand why or how a ship as heavy as it is or even heavy boats in general are able to float on the sea. I have some items here which I'll be using for some of these experiments. I have this big bowl of water. I also have this filled with water. The reason I have this is because it has some measurements. I have this. Let's think of this as our ship. To balls here to explain some concepts my lens cover for my camera i have this tiny pin here which we're also going to use for some explanations i have my roll-on my nice roll-on some paper here which i'll also use to explain some concepts but before we move on to touch these concepts let's look at a quick experiment now here is my lens cover when i put it here you can see that it's floating. Now you probably think this is floating because it's not really heavy. That is not the actual reason why it's floating because if I take this pin, which is actually not as heavy as the lens cover, when I put it in, it doesn't float. It actually goes to the floor. I can show you as evidence if you don't believe me, that is it down there. Well, the heavier something is doesn't really determine if that thing will float or not. The weight is one thing, but there are several other factors all playing together to determine the fate of that object. So to understand how a ship is able to float, there are some important concepts you have to know. Some of these you probably still remember from school. The first concept is density. You can think of density as how much stuff is packed into a specific place. For example, if you look at this piece of paper, Let's just say the mass of this paper is one kilogram. Now look at this paper, it's spread flat, which means it covers a large volume. But now if I fold this paper and make it as squeezed as possible, we still have the same one kilogram for the paper, but this has more density than the previous state. And that's because there is more stuff packed into one place compared to when we had it like this, where the stuff was spread on a larger volume so this is less dense than when we had it really folded this is more dense we'll see why this matters in the video but there's a formula for density which is mass over volume you can think of this as the mass of a certain object spread across a certain volume and as we progress in this video you understand why density is that important also good to know the approximated density of water like fresh water is 1000 kilograms per meter cube but we'll come to that in a second let's look at the second concept which is displacement displacement describes the change in position of an object from an initial point to a final point in the context of water as we'll be focusing on in this video this is the volume of water pushed aside when an object is submerged in it for example you see this bottle of water here we have 1400 milliliters here we have 1600 milliliters here so the middle is 1,500 milliliters. Let's just say that the water is currently at 1,450 milliliters. Now I'm going to take my nice roll on here and I'm going to put it inside. And now we have the water currently at, let's just say 1,550 milliliters, which is like 10 milliliters. And that is the displacement. Now with an example like this, the displacement is kind of obvious, but when I put a ball like this in it, even though this is not fully submerged into the water, there is some displacement because if you look at the bottom part, a part of it here is submerged in the water. That part that is submerged also causes a displacement on the level of the water and if I should also do this there is some displacement going on where this lower part that is submerged pushes the water from the previous volume a bit higher and if we look at our nice ship here there is also some displacement going on in fact if i put a bit of heavy things in it you can see that this is submerged and there is also some displacement going on at 
the level of the water but one thing to note is that the volume of water displaced is equal to the volume of the submerged portion of the object so if i put again our nice boat that volume of displacement we have here whether that is one liter two liter five liters is equal to the volume of this lower part that was submerged in the water we'll see why all of that is important as we progress let's move to the third concept buoyancy this is the upward force exerted by a fluid on an object that is partially or fully immersed in it look at this ball here if i put it in let's say i try to push it in you notice that the water pushes it up that is buoyancy or that is the buoyant force it is that upward force from the water that is exerted on this object as the object is partially or fully immersed in it this concept really applies to ships because there is a certain force from the water that is pushing the ship from the bottom up so even if you should press the ship down if you leave it that water will still push it up to a certain point where it cannot push it anymore but of course as we progress in this video you get to see why that is even important but let's look at the last concept Archimedes principle. This principle is fundamental to understanding buoyancy. This principle states that the magnitude of the buoyant force is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced by the object. So what that means is when we put this in and we have some displacement, let's say that displacement is one liter. I don't think that's what is happening here. And the weight of that one liter that is displaced is equal to the buoyant force that is exerted on this ball upwards by the liquid. These four major concepts all play an important role and work together to make it possible for ships to float on water. Now that we've established this concept let's go back to experiment and see how all these concepts work so like we saw from earlier when you have the paper like this covering more volume it has less density compared to when it is folded and there is more stuff in one place then it becomes more dense so when you look at a boat on the sea what you notice is how wide and long it is now this means that the boat has less density because the mass is spread across a large volume. Even if the boat itself might be heavy, you notice that it covers enough space and also there's a lot of space in the boat, probably just a few chairs here and there. And the fact that the mass of this boat is spread across a certain volume and even some of those parts filled with air makes the boat have less density than the density of water. But why does this density matter? An object would float if the average density of that object is less than the density of water. Now I am saying average density because it's possible that that object is made of different things with different densities. When you think about a ship for example it's made up of metals, wood, several things. Now each of these things on their own can be less dense than water or more dense than water but the average density of all of these things is that one single density value that can represent everything. And ships are designed in a way where all of these things individually having more density than water are put together in a certain way where the overall the average density is less than the density of water and that makes it float now if the average density of all of these things was more than the density of water the ship will sink so when I have an item like this which is floating it is floating because its density is less than the density of water. Obviously this feels heavy, but because it is covering more volume and there is a lot of space in the middle here, now it has a less density than water. And that is why it is floating. But when you look at this, which we saw earlier, with this roll on in here, it has more density than the density of water. And that's why when I put it in, it sinks. Coming back to our pin from earlier, the reason why it sinks is because 
it is more dense than water when i put it you can see that it sinks however there is something also called surface tension which can allow some items to float even if they might be denser than water this is usually the case for tiny items if i put this gently at the top it might float this is the thing about surface tension which is that tension between the item and the surface of the water that surface tension might just be enough to sustain it at the top but if i should apply a bit of pressure to break that tension it sinks i don't want to go deeper into surface tension in this video because then it might make this video so long but without that tension in place this is sinking because even though it might look really tiny and not very heavy it is still denser than Water. But density is not the only factor at play here. There's also buoyancy and displacement. Just like we saw with this ball, the buoyancy force, according to Archimedes' principle, is equal to the weight of the water displaced. Well, for this ball to float, the weight of water displaced, the buoyancy force, needs to be greater than the weight of the whole ball. So let's say this whole ball is like two kilograms. Now, when I put this in the water and it causes a displacement, if that displacement is more than two kilogram, what is going to happen is that that buoyancy force is now greater than the weight of the ball. So the force is able to push the ball up. Now at this point where the ball is not sinking any further or floating any further, this is the point where the buoyancy force is at equilibrium with the weight of the ball. Now coming to this example, you might think, is it that the buoyancy force is not enough to push this out well the buoyancy fox works in relative to the density in this case what we have in there has more density so the buoyancy force is not enough to push it out so that is the first factor it has to be less dense but when it's less dense you now have the other factor like buoyancy force which is able to push the item if it is more and at this point where it's at equilibrium it now floats same thing if we look at this item here the amount of water it displaced the weight which is the buoyancy force is equal to the weight of this object so i just got this object really quick apart from ships and boats you have probably seen some people put a uh, flat wood in water and it also floats well in this case again this wood is less dense than the water that's very important but aside that this wood is able to displace enough water such that the weight of that water equal to the buoyancy force is able to keep this wood in this position if i push the wood down now the weight of the displaced water the buoyancy force is greater than the weight of the wood so that buoyancy force is applied to it comes up onto this point where the buoyancy force is now in equilibrium with the total weight of the object so the buoyancy force cannot push the object any further up now before we go to ships and boats, let me use this quick pen as an example when i put it like this you can see that it floats but when i put it like this you can see that it's not floating, it's actually going to the bottom. Now, even though this is still, it feels less dense than water, you can obviously calculate the density by checking the mass and the volume that this occupies. But putting it this way, it's able to displace enough water such that we have that buoyancy force keeping it at this point but if i do it like this then it's not really displacing enough water and that is why it is sinking there is no buoyancy force enough to push it to the top so coming back to heavy ships and heavy boats they are designed in such a way that all these principles apply. Let's say this is our ship and our boat. Even if a ship is like, let's just say 500 kg, the ship is designed such that that 500 kg is spread across a certain volume by spreading it across a certain volume you reduce the overall density of the ship the ship is created in such a way that it's able to displace as much water as possible and this is why ships have a maximum load capacity often referred to as a payload capacity this is the total weight of everything in the ship including people materials cargo and everything that the ship is capable of carrying without affecting the density 
and the buoyancy force required to keep it afloat. So that is why ships, boats or even heavy objects in general are able to float on water. So these heavy things you see on the sea, they are designed in this way such that they are less dense than water and they are able to displace enough water to create enough force to keep them afloat. If you enjoyed the experiments or the explanation in this video, please give it a like and subscribe. I get really curious about things happening around me. I do my research and I love to share these things with many other people like you currently watching.